All right, example one in 10.2 wants us to do the, the product of two functions. Um, so they give us f of x, they give us g of x, and then they tell us how h of x is defined. I'm just going to tweak it a little bit, and I'm going to say that h of x, I am going to write as f of x times g of x. And I, I did the closed dot anyway. Typically, you don't have to when you write like that, but I think it's good to see that more and more and more. Now, it wants us to state the domain and range of h of x. That's difficult to do without actually determining what it is. The one thing I'm going to do that's going to make multiplication just a little bit easier is I'm going to write f of x as x plus 2 times x plus 2 minus 5. So that means that it's x squared plus 4x plus 4 minus 5 or x squared plus 4x minus 1. And that's going to be a little bit friendlier for the distribution process because now I can write h of x as function f, which is x squared plus 4x minus 1 times function g, which is 3x minus 4. And now what we have to do is we have to make sure that each term in the, uh, in the first factor multiplies onto each term in the second factor. I actually like, it doesn't really matter what you call first or second. So I'm going to write this and I'm going to color code it that I'm going to take the 3x and I'm going to distribute it onto all three of those terms. So we're going to have x squared times 3x, which is 3x cubed, 4x times 3x, which is 12x squared, and negative 1 times 3x, which is negative 3x. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the negative 4, not just the 4, the sign has to go with it, and I'm going to distribute that onto each term in the other bracket. So negative 4 times x squared is negative 4x squared, negative 4 times 4x is negative 16x, and negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. Now, there, there's nothing wrong with what we've done there. You know, we could leave it that way, but it's going to be a little bit easier to identify domain and range if we clean it up as much as possible. So I'm going to write that h of x is only 1 cubed x, so it's 3x cubed plus 8x squared minus 19x plus 4. All right, now you could use your calculator. This should be 3x cubed, sorry about that. You could always use your calculator. Plug that in, take a look at the graph, determine the domain and range. But you've done chapter three, and we should know that this is a polynomial. Polynomial, make sure I spell that right. Um, that has degree three and a positive leading coefficient. So without looking too much in depth on the graph, I mean, there's a couple things we should talk about. We know the y-intercept is positive four. That's the constant term. Because it's degree three with a positive leading coefficient, it looks something like this. I don't know if the, the movement in the middle is right, but what I do know is that the domain and range for a polynomial that has degree three and a positive leading coefficient is x is an element to the real and y is an element to the real. Because there are no possible, you know, values of x that make it undefined, this question is as straightforward as finding that, that cubic polynomial that is h of x, and then identifying due to its properties, we can identify the domain without overthinking it too much.